Over the years, the Nickelodeon Super Brawl series has taken many different turns. When Workin' Man took over the series after MP Game Studio shut down, they seemed to try something new with every release. Super Brawl 3 had this dark, intense, good versus evil theme, then it was followed by 4, which had a more upbeat superhero theme. We can do this! Not to mention how creative they got with spin-offs like Just Got Real and Scary Brawl. But when they reached the next installment in 2016, they once again tried something new. This wasn't called Super Brawl 5, but rather Super Brawl World. If I had to guess, I'd say they gave it a new title because of the different area of focus it had. This time, the main draw was the Brawlville PvP mode. This was somewhat of a story mode where you would battle players from around the world. So that could explain the title. Aside from that, there were many other changes that set it apart from everything before it. Even so, some things stayed the same. Songs and backgrounds from previous games were carried over into this. It almost feels like an accumulation of the entire series so far. So let's walk through this and see how it is. First, let's check out the roster. SpongeBob and Patrick returned, but Plankton got left behind in 4. <laughs> Timmy Turner, the Turtles, Skywill, and Kid Danger are also back. Red and Pink Ranger are here, but are based on the ones from Ninja Steel instead of Dino Charge this time. However, we said goodbye to Sanjay and Craig, the Breadwinners, Korra, Harvey Beaks, as well as Banana and Goat. <laughs> To replace them, we had a few newcomers. My personal favorite was Zim. He stands out more than anyone else, being a classic character whose show was long cancelled by then. But it's nice to see his popularity acknowledged. The Loud House also debuted with three representatives, beating out Spongebob but losing to TMNT. Other newcomers include Alvin from Alvin and the Chipmunks, Phoebe from the Thundermans, and Bunsen from Bunsen is a Beast. Over time, they added Ollie from Welcome to the Wayne. Now that's a show I don't hear talked about very often. Fun fact, Kevin Conroy played one of the villains in it. But confusingly, the guy who played the character before him was named Kevin Conway. How's that for a coincidence? But to start this off, let's check out Brawlville PvP. In this, you fight with other players around the world. Sort of. When I previously mentioned that this game was multiplayer, a few commenters pointed out that Nickelodeon often has a strange way of handling these things. A lot of the time, they'll save your profile but have it be controlled by a computer when other players fight it. It really makes me wonder which Nick games are truly multiplayer and which ones aren't. But if you don't care to partake in a fight, you can watch two random people duke it out in Brawl TV mode. It's good for studying moves and seeing potential strategies. But anyway, you start by choosing a team. Divine, Wrath, or Might. I guess it just comes down to what color you like best. There's also an announcer that continuously reminds us there's no going back whenever we make a decision. Are you sure? There's no going back! So you pick your country and select a name by combining two random words. You can make some hilarious combinations with these. Then you pick your starting character, but you can change it later. And now we get to the very unique changes Workin' Man made to the format. You can equip accessories to improve your attack, defense, and super move. You unlock more as you go through PvP. So even if your character isn't the best fighter on their own, you can put in the work to make them good. See? It takes discipline! And then there's the other new feature. Similar to the fans mechanic in 3, now we have Brawl Calls. You can select a character or object from one of the shows to come in and help you battle. Some of these include Popsicle Spongebob from Just Got Real, the original Super Brawl Spongebob, and most excitingly, a log. Characters like Danny Phantom and Korra are also here, but it's kind of sad that they aren't full-fledged fighters. I will never join you! There's also this one called Shinigami. I hear it's the most powerful because it gives you a death note and you can just kill your enemy right there. Once you've selected everything, you move across a few tiles to reach a crate. With every space you move to, you fight someone. You also fight for the sake of your team, trying to get a higher score than the other teams. In combat, you have a regular attack, but as you fight and fill the two meters beneath your health, you can use a special attack. When both meters are filled, you can use a brawl call. You just keep winning fights until you reach these crates, then you open them and get your prize. So let's talk about the fights themselves. If you just want a quick match, head to Quick Brawl. Unfortunately, you can't choose who you go up against. You just select a fighter, give them some gear, give them a brawl call, then send them off to die in combat. Such is the way of war. Now it's kinda hard to assess who's stronger than who because it really comes down to what gear you throw on each character. Still, some tend to play better than others. Leo and Spongebob can be merciless. Once they start swinging, they never stop. 
Donnie's pretty good too. And good luck getting close to Mikey. His nunchucks only need to hit you once to keep you incapacitated for at least a few seconds. As for Raph, he's kinda the worst. As far as the turtles are concerned, at least. Sky Whale is kinda bad, but has some really creative animations when it attacks. Pink Ranger's a little weak and kinda hard to control. The opposite of the one in four that could just blow her enemy up with every step she took. She also moves backwards with every few attacks she makes, which is really annoying for both fighters involved. Kid Danger isn't exactly top tier either. He's a little stiffer than everyone else. Lincoln's creative because he throws his sisters at you. That's one way to incorporate more characters in the game. He's okay, but it can take a moment for some of his attacks to land. And yeah, Red Ranger will predictably slaughter you. Luann, who seems to have escaped the fate of being thrown by Lincoln, is pretty good. Her special move lets her throw a pie that completely sweeps the screen. Now Clyde is really not great. He moves really slowly and doesn't pack much of a punch. Like, come on, look at this. It even takes him a second to pull off his special move. Phoebe isn't great for doing consistent damage, but she can keep an enemy back if you just keep using her breath and mind powers to make the fight last 40 centuries. Timmy's good, but after a few strikes, he takes a moment to deliver the final blow. This could act as an opening for an opponent. And luckily for me, Zim is great. You can even zone with him. You need the plunger of doom! He also calls on Gurr to help with his special move. Love seeing my favorite little robot be relevant. Patrick is strange, especially because he licks his enemy. He's really slow, so faster characters can easily get the upper hand. I guess that's a callback to how he was when he first debuted in Super Brawl. Still, when he cartwheels for his special move, he can completely destroy you. And then there's Alvin, minus the chipmunks. He's good for people who want to stay far away from their enemy when they fight. But he really isn't that strong. Once the other one gets too close, he's going down. Then there's Bunsen, who's very strong, actually. He roars and can surround himself with a damage-dealing circle. And his special move is brutal. Whoa, look out. Bunsen is a beast. And as for Ollie, he's perfectly mid-range. He can be handy sometimes. But like I said, it comes down to how you dress everyone up. But not only that, there are some brawl calls that can really shake the game. Ones like Cosmo and Wanda, Mikey Monroe and Pearl can heal you. The Flying Dutchman and Captain Man dash across the screen, the Ryu Spongebob uses a Hadouken, and let's not forget the log. Roll call! Perfect. The toughest ones are the Rabbids. Look at this, the victim doesn't even stand a chance. Danny Phantom also gives you a shield. And honestly, the Shinigami might be my favorite to use. You don't get a death note, but I've gotten some of the best results with its bad attack. April O'Neil is also really tough, as is Mr. Super Awesomeness, who's back from Super Brawl 4. He still has his ice cream finisher, too. Other ones like Megazord are kind of a gamble if they'll work out the way you want them to. Roll call! So, with all this in mind, what do we think about this whole thing? Well, I will say it's a very good looking game. The style is appropriate for Nickelodeon and it makes good use of each show. All the cool features also leave you with a lot of potential for how you can play. At the same time, I wouldn't say this is the best installment in the Super Brawl series. 2 still holds that title for me. I feel like the fighters are kinda hard to move. It's hard to explain, but the movement is stiff and I feel like I can't maneuver across the stage as well as I could in the other ones. But overall, I think this is a nice love letter to the Super Brawl series. Containing music, stages, and references to other games is a really nice touch. Especially when you consider that from here, the series would change for good. The next game would be called Super Brawl Universe, an app game rather than an online one. This would also be developed by Playsoft instead of Workin' Man. From there, the series would hit the consoles and give us All-Star Brawl and All-Star Brawl 2. It's really come a long way since Jingle Brawl. 
but no matter how far it's come, it's nice to look back and see the steps it took to reach this height. Many of us remember playing these games at one point or another, and it's great to see how they've changed over time. So since I don't normally cover console games, it looks like the one remaining game for me to cover is Super Brawl Universe. We've come a long way to get here, but this is what it's all led up to. It's all led up to this! How did this app hold up? We'll have to find out the next time we look at this series. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.